You can ride buggy chug me twice. Is it on camera? I'm sure he hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> He's got it somewhere. If people call me a spaz, he popped my arm. My my arm cracks every morning because of this guy. It's it's frustrating, but if he could do so, he could easily be like the best grappler in the world. He's very, very good. We're constantly competing against guys that are literally juiced to the gills. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> and people are, oh, well, it's not against the rules. I have morals. <laughs> Maybe an hour before uh, I compete, uh, get like a hard, like a uh, full, like we call it first wind in wrestling. Mm -hmm. uh, get the first wind, like blow your lungs completely out, get exhausted. I, I took his back. I was able to get two hooks, get a body triangle and threaten multiple rear naked chokes. And I didn't win. I don't, I, I don't know why. John asked Nicky Rod how I was doing in wrestling. Nicky Rod's like, oh, he's good, except he has herpes on his forehead. <laughs> I don't have herpes. I had impetigo, which is just another skin infection. Yeah. It's, it is disgusting, but it's a skin infection, <laughs> not herpes. Some British sparkling water. Yeah, man. <laughs> Still trying to like, Still trying to tackle my monster addiction. That is hard. Isn't it? I know. I'm down to one You're a day. Addicted to monster. Yeah. I'm on one a day. I am. It's That's a big thing. Not good. I know. No, it's a zero sugar one though. <laughs> Bro, <I'm making laughs> <sure that>. <laughs> <laughs> there's plenty of other bad things in there. Oh no, man. That monster addiction's real though, isn't it? Yeah, it's real. How many was you was you thinking a few a day? Is it three. Three a day. Three monsters. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god! How yeah. did you feel? Uh, nothing, nothing, <laughs> nothing. Like, like a, that's nothing. scary. I think I'm like a non-responder, man. But that's but that's why I keep chugging it because it just doesn't do anything. So I just have like two. Oh, man, on the team. I'm down to one now. When you when you slow down, did you feel the difference? No. So what? Why were you having you just? Because I'm a diet addict, mate. Wow, <laughs> wow. I think it tastes great, though, don't they? Like a, like a monster ultra. Like they are good. They're good. I'm not. I don't drink, girl. So like yeah. I rarely drink. So like my little outlet is definitely a, a zero sugar monster. Interesting. Do you have any? I can't have caffeine. Why? I'll fucking die. <laughs> wow. It's, <laughs> just, it's, it's, it's not like a though. hyper responder. Yeah, it's terrible for me. Yeah. I don't drink coffee. I don't have anything at all. No way. Yeah, I don't. I like being like, I like having a consistent feeling throughout the day. Like I, I like knowing that like, mm -hmm. Like I feel like f the food I have affects me more more than enough. I don't need like extra caffeine for this. Like I, I know after training it's going to be like mm. I'm going to be down and then I'm going to have some food. I'll probably have like like something high in sugar, like fruit stuff like that, something light. Have another workout, and then have like a heavier meal. Um, then just like pass out after that. Have you ever had any alcohol? Never. 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 Wow. Awesome going, mate. Yeah, I can't. Uh, have you, have you not have you not tried it no never it's only been legal to drink for like a year though oh right? yeah, yeah. I forget that. Yeah, in, yeah. in the uk like pretty much people are drinking at 16. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you guys you guys also like cigarettes here a lot oh mate well it's getting less popular now it's vapes oh, okay, do, you, okay. do you have them in america a lot or like yeah vape pens? yeah more yeah definitely like they're, more they're vapes going than crazy cigarettes. now aren't they? Yeah. but like yeah. yeah i think smoking was massive mm. everyone smoked yeah everyone smoked yeah yeah i smoked for a while probably going back like 15 years Oh, you're saying 15 years ago? Yeah, 15 years ago I smoked. Okay. Um, for, for about 10 years. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. 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 yeah, I never really smoked. I had asthma, so I never smoked. Yeah. Because I know I, I, my, my lungs are shit as they are. Like, if yeah. I smoked, I'd die. Same. I also have asthma. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah if, I, if I smoked, I'd die. 100%. Did you, were you training when back when you were smoking? Yeah, not very well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was going to say, did he feel a difference when he transferred to... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> crazy work about wheezing To be that. fair, <laughs> like what, what did it is when I started competing. So I was training like as a hobbyist for a bit. And then I started competing in jiu-jitsu. And my first comp, like white belt, like open, local open event. Three minutes in, I thought my lungs were going to explode. Oh, man, I can imagine. Yeah. So that was enough then to go, right, actually, there's a reason to quit now. Yeah. So I stopped quitting. I stopped they used to have the lads that wow. used to smoke at football. Yeah. And they used to, like, be on the side of the pitch having a fag before we went on. And then they'd be, like, wheezing, coming off, and then wheezing, coming off half time and having another fag. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Fuck you, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have any issues quitting? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it took me ages. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I... Uh, <laughs> 
such a dirty addict, mate. So I, I wore the patches, the nicotine patches. Yeah, yeah. You've seen those? So I wore the nicotine patches for a bit, but then I continued smoking wearing the <laughs> nicotine patches. <laughs> wow. No <way. laughs> you're, just getting, you're just getting extra nicotine now. So then I, so, <laughs> I, so, I, so, I, so I gave up on the patches and yeah. then went from like, I don't know, like 10 a day to 20 a day. No way. What? Yeah. So I actually increased my addiction by wow. trying to quit because I'm an idiot. Wow. What's the, the gum? Like one of my clients, she was addicted to the gum. So she like come off smoking and then she was like Nicorette or whatever it's good. Mate, she was spending like 20 quid a week on Nicorettes. Like all the time, like getting this nicotine in through chewing gum. Yeah. She could the, get off them. Yeah, it took me, it took me probably, I reckon probably a combined like two years to, to really knock it on the head. Wow. For like, like quitting for a bit and then starting again and yeah. quitting and starting. So it took me a while. That's strenuous. Yeah. Quite, uh, I, I haven't got that addictive personality, so I'm quite lucky. If like, if I'm like, I don't want it, I just want yeah. The only thing I'm struggling with is monster. <laughs> <laughs> so, mate, I think uh, not smoking, not drinking, not having coffee. Yeah, very wise move. Be good, mate, yeah. I try. Yeah, I try. It's good. But welcome to the UK, mate. Uh, did you say welcome to the I UK? I did say welcome <laughs> to the UK. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for having me. No worries, man. It's been good. Today's the first day I've seen the sun. I've been here for like five, six days. That makes you a very lucky man. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, you'd have to spend a month here. I was about to say, it wouldn't surprise really? me if he didn't see the sun while wow. he was here. Wow. Yeah, it's that shit. Coming from Texas as well, mate, it must be like yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah, probably sort of maybe July, August is probably the best time. And you're still, uh, if you're lucky, get a weaker sun. August has been terrible this year. Yeah. Hasn't it? It's been like, well, I can't even remember, like maybe three or four sunny days the whole of August. What's uh, like the hottest it gets here? 30, 30 yeah. degrees Celsius. Uh, what is that in Fahrenheit? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> like double 60, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what it is in Fahrenheit. Wow. I think Texas probably gets around like maybe 40. Yeah, I imagine so, degrees, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I imagine I, so. I wish I knew what this was. <laughs> yeah. What's like a hottest day in Texas? Hottest day in Texas? Yeah, like what's a hot day in Texas? Like, I mean, we've, like last summer, we it was over 100 degrees for uh, like it hit over 100 degrees every single day for over an entire month straight so that must that's uh, that's over 40 yeah i'm pretty sure yeah, yeah. like pretty sure because when i went to cyprus it was over 100 and i'm pretty sure that hit like 38 or something like that mm. so yeah so yeah so it never it never gets particularly hot never gets particularly cold though either so we never really get snow really it just pretty much rains all the time <laughs> <laughs> You're a lot of suicides, mate. <laughs> yeah, I was. I landed here and I was like, man. I first question I asked myself, I'm like, I wonder, like, what the suicide rate is here. I really, it's pretty fucking. It's pretty high, high mate. Yeah, it's, it's high, yeah. High. yeah. It's not as high as like Poland, but it's pretty high. Yeah, I think to be fair, I think it's the same as the US, but it's the, the biggest killer in men under fifty, and it probably is partly to do with the weather. Wow. Yeah. Was what's the issue with Poland? You said it's not as bad as Poland. We, when we were talking about suicide rates with another guest, he was saying like Poland's like suicide rate in men is like oh. crazy. It's crazy high compared oh, to the wow. UK, which I was like. It's going to get more rain. It's, it's miserable in Poland, isn't it? Yeah, I guess. You know Interesting. I mean? Yeah. But yeah, so this is the first time in the UK for you. First time in the UK. Um, it's been a good experience so far. I mean, I uh, fought on Polaris. Mm -hmm. I had one seminar, got another one today. Yeah. Keeping busy. Yeah, nice. I think so far you arrived in London, you said, and then you went straight to Poole, which is like a, a little yep. town. Yeah. And then went to Cardiff, which is kind of, Cardiff's a city, right? Yeah. But it's yeah, yeah. In, in Wales. Did you go to the castle? My hotel was like 200 feet away from the nice. castle. So, yeah, yeah. Um, Cause you, know, you guys don't get many castles in the US, right? I don't think there's <laughs> any castles in the US. <laughs> yeah, no castles. Uh, yeah, I've, I'm texting uh, the guy that was over there like helping me out uh tom i'm texting him he's like oh you should check out the castle i'm like cows there's a fucking castle <laughs> <laughs> like sick okay yeah I'll, just, I'll look at the castle and uh we're walking to the hotel and as we're walking to the hotel down the road you can see you can see the castle and he's like oh hey, mate that's the that's the castle over there and i'm like <laughs> no one's saying anything about this um so yeah i went after like as soon as i had time pretty much went checked it out i didn't get to i don't know if you can go in i think you can go yeah you go can, in you can, can. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um it when i got to see it when i got to like walk up to it it was uh it's like fucking one in the morning or something so i couldn't but uh 
That was still cool to see, though. What do you think of the Welsh accent? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's easy to, for the most part, easy to understand you guys. But, man, I was, I was telling you about the one kid who's like 16. Uh, yesterday, he was like, uh, every time he said something to me, I had to ask him like two or three times, like, what? what are you saying i'm so sorry <laughs> it's almost like embarrassing for me because it's like fuck i can't like why can't i understand this guy did you see any of the signs with the welsh the welsh language on it no did you see uh, any of that like they, they've got their own language oh really and it is wild yeah it's it is honestly like the words like it'll be the and it'll be this long it sounds like elvish if you ever watched Lord of the Rings, are the elf speakers like the welsh language really yeah they've they've got they, they've got a town it's got the the longest name I think in the in in the world. It's got something like I think it's got about thirty five characters in one word, and that's one the name word. of this town in Wales. And wow. and they somehow expect people to present, uh, like pronounce that. It's insane. Yeah, it's crazy. It's it's wild. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But that's the thing with the UK, mate. We talked about it obviously a little bit earlier. But the accents here are just insane because you travel maybe an hour, yeah, if that, and you've got a different accent. We said in our home city, you've even got different areas of. I say it's a city, it's barely a city, it's a town with different accents. It doesn't make any sense to me. Because <laughs> in Texas, it'll just be the same, the same, act, unless there's like, like Austin, there's a lot of people living there now that are from like California and all over. But like, I feel like mainly aside from Austin, everyone kind of sounds the same. Like they just have like a little country for, for the most part, mm. but uh, not, not here. Mm not here yeah and and to put it in perspective as well we we had a we spoke to somebody else from texas recently and uh we just we, we worked out that texas is two i think 2.5 the size 2.5 times the size of the uk that's that's crazy yeah. that's crazy <laughs> that's just texas <laughs> yeah because that's what we were trying to work out when we? we was like i know it's bigger but how much bigger and i like googled it when we got off and i was like fuck so much yeah so yeah, lots of accents. Have you come unstuck with any of the, uh, the the differences in words at all yet? Have any? Have any of the? What's your question? So you know, uh, we've got words mean different things in the UK to the US. Like when he said, oh, oh, "I'm going to go for a slash." I see. Go. But there's a, there's a couple in particular that could get you in a bit of trouble in the UK. Oh really? Has anybody warned you about this yet? No. So uh, <laughs> so pants. Uh huh. So what are pants to you? Like this. Yeah, they're trousers. Pants are what you're wearing underneath. Really? So boxer uh -huh. shorts or pants? Okay. Underwear. Underwear or pants. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So if you ask them to take their pants off or pants down, then uh, that's, a se that's a sexual proposition here. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, you guys have fanny packs, right? Fanny packs, yeah. Yeah, we call them bum bags. <laughs> because here, fanny means something completely different. What, what's it mean? Vagina. Yeah. Vagina. The, the lady bits. Vagina. Yeah. That's Interesting. Yeah. So if you, if you go to a girl and say, get your fanny out, <laughs> uh, I keep seeing seeing and hearing people say uh, fancy as well. What, what's that? Like, what's that? In what context? Like on the train ride here, I was reading something. It was like something like uh, wherever you fancy or something yeah, about like so adventure, wherever you, want. wherever you want. Yeah. So fancy is to, to like or want something. Yeah. If you fancy it or not. Yeah. Do you fancy that? Hmm. Just <laughs> so that, now you know that they're probably the worst two. They're probably okay. the worst two. That the okay. pants and, and fanny. So I'll keep that in mind. So you you stay all right now. So uh, <laughs> you'll be all right. Get you. No, you'll be all right. So obviously, I was at a, uh, Polaris recently when you competed, and obviously, slightly weird result. Yeah. But yeah, talk us through the the kind of match and and obviously the result and your thoughts on it and reflections on it now. Yeah. Uh, so I ended up losing at Polaris um, by judge, judge's decision. Um, I had. Performance wise, um, I'd say not the best performance. Um, there's a few, I guess, just like tactical mistakes, um, like uh, strategy, essentially, um, that I made. Like, uh, like, for example, from the quad pod position, I tend to concede like the quad pod position because I'm very comfortable there. Uh, like I, I've gotten there, I got there in my match at Polaris. I got there against people like William Tackett, Giancarlo Bodoni, and these guys can't take my back for the most, for the most part, can't take my back or like secure 
two hooks. And uh, that would be considered a dominant position, right? Two hooks taking the back. Um, most of the time I'm able to shrug them off with my profound technique um, and usually get like some sort of sweep or just be able to reset regardless. But uh, yeah, same thing happened in this match with, with uh, Muhammad. Um, he goes to take my back, puts one hook in, I shrug him off and he goes to concede to guard. He's playing guard and I just try, try passing from then, then on. Um, that was essentially his main offensive movement. Um, and that was the only time that I was close to, uh, or I, yeah, the only time I was close to being scored on. Um, but I'm very comfortable with, in that position so that's why i concede it um but in the eyes of the judges it looks bad like it looks like okay this guy's this guy's losing um so it's i mean i made a mistake with by doing that like i shouldn't i just shouldn't have conceded that position um as well as the other main offensive movement that happened in in the match was i i took his back um i was able to get two hooks get a body triangle and threaten multiple rear naked chokes um and I didn't win. I, mean, I, I don't know why. Um, yeah, I guess it's just like the, the rule set specifically. Uh, I, I don't like people saying I was robbed. Um, I do like, I can understand how the guy won in that rule set um, because, you know, what? I actually don't understand how he won. <laughs> You're trying I, to be nice. And yeah. yeah, I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> That's be nice. like, I don't know. I don't, I don't really care. I don't really care too much about the outcome. I'd worry more about my, my performance, how I performed. Um, yeah, it's, it's just like a tactical error more than anything else. So, yeah. Yeah. It was a surprise to me as a spectator. And obviously if there were any points you would have won easily. Yeah. Yeah. I, there was, there was a couple of matches actually where the results were, um, not as I expected. Yeah. I think there's something about the scoring, right? With Polaris, where it's in thirds or something. The, yeah, where the, they split the match in like three quadrants and they judge each quadrant separately. So if the guy won those first two quadrants, but you beat the piss out of him in that second or in that last quadrant, um, you don't win the match. So it's like if he's like maybe edged out a victory in those first two uh, periods, um, and you score like you get to two dominant positions or multiple dominant positions. They they don't doesn't matter because that's only one round for you, um, which is weird in a way. Like I think it's it's kind of it can be a, a flawed uh, rule set. And if I mean if there's multiple matches that are going like we, weird ways where a lot of people are kind of like ah, like this doesn't this doesn't make sense. Then I think like something should be changed in the rule set. Um, I'm not mad about my match. I, I, I had a great time competing for Polaris. Um, but with that being said, I think, uh, I mean, they've had that rule set for a very long time. Like they haven't changed anything. So I think, uh, I don't know, sometimes you just kind of like, you have to adjust, you know, so. Seems weird though, like the CJI rule set <coughs> with that is exactly the same, but that you get like a, you can get like a 10, eight round. Can you? So yeah. like a seven, seven time round. And you've also, so. you've also got also those physical points, like those, those, bookends to the round as well where exactly, it actually stops yeah. and then starts yeah, yeah. and yeah. you can actually uh you know physically see where you're at i quite like that yeah. cj like oh i'm down i need to yes. need to hit this next round you know and well that was that was a stroke of genius really because yeah. it made it exciting if you're down in that last round by a, by a point even you're like right i need to i need to fucking win this yeah, yeah. Well, i don't think you could have done much else in that last last section over then obviously get the finish <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I think like, I mean, when I took his back, I was like, oh, I won. So I was very confident. I was fucking around a lot, honestly, which <laughs> I shouldn't have done. Uh, but I like, I like trapped his arm behind his back and I was like, oh, like I, I was just doing like stupid things, which I, I it's not that I don't normally do them because I do a lot of stupid shit in training, but like I could have, when I put his, his arm behind his back, I could have just like lifted it up and like finished uh, like a shoulder lock from there or i could have trapped his other arm with my foot and then he would have had no arms to defend the rear naked choke but instead i was there smothering him so it's like <laughs> i was fucking around a little bit um 
because I was I was confident that I that I won. I was like, oh, this, he's not he's not going to get out. He's not going to fucking do anything. I I was the only person to get any sort of dominant position because they were like, okay, what is a dom in the in the in the um, uh, rules meeting? They're like, what is a dominant position? Dominant position is uh, like a solidifying a guard pass or like taking the back with hooks. He didn't get hooks in and he didn't pass my guard. He wasn't able to sweep me. He had attempts for all of these things, but I solidified a back take and that should like top all of those things essentially. Um, but like I said, it, it is what it is. It's just like, uh, it's not very frustrating at all. It's just like, I don't know. I guess maybe I just have to mature a bit. Maybe I should. Maybe I shouldn't have been fucking around when I was out there. It is what it is. I, I did wonder with that, you know, obviously coming off the back of ADCC, which was obviously a, you know, a huge event, and you obviously had a great run on that. Then doing Polaris, was it? Did it feel like it was just a bit more chilled, and that you just didn't take it as serious? Mm. Uh, I don't think it was that. I didn't take it as seriously. Um, I think it was more. I, I went about the camp. At, at, exactly as i should have i think uh i don't really i just kind of kept the same momentum throughout like the entire camp for adcc competed adcc and just continue for the next two weeks until i was i was here um so I, I i didn't change much um it was just a matter of yeah i had no issues like gas was there yeah. Every, everything was there it was just like i guess lack of knowledge with the rule set mm -hmm. um but you know that's that's on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah fair enough. Let's chat about ADCC. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, awesome run, great match at the end. How are you feeling on reflection? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm happy. Uh, I'm happy with the result. Um, but I'm. I talk about this a lot. I'm more happy with my performance more than anything else. Pretty much the the entire camp, Dima was Dima was running our camp, um, leading up to ADCC, and essentially it was just like he gave me a few things to focus on, and I did that every single day for like two months straight, um, and it worked out very very well. Um, you know, D Dima helped me out a lot, and you know, credit to him. I I really appreciate all, all the help he gave me, um, but. Uh, Performance wise, yeah, I guess should I just break down all the matches? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh so first match I had Achilles Rocha. Um he's good. We have similar styles. I would say I'm just like a little bit more refined in all of the aspects in a way. Um we do the same stuff, like kind of scrambly wrestler type of deal. Um I was able to take him down, take his back, and get a, a rear naked choke. I actually still have the scar from his teeth on my forearm. <laughs> no way. Yeah. Um, and my, when I locked up the rear naked choke, his, my form was in his in his mouth, like his mouth was wide open. Um, <laughs> and I got the I got the finish. I had a weird. There's a weird hand fighting sequence where our hands were in between our legs and i was like hand fighting below almost like a, like a ball and chain kind of deal and then i was able to like get a uh, lock in the the choking hand um but yeah quick quick kind of uh first match uh good start to a big tournament so i was i was happy with that um and then second match i had ryan aiken ryan aiken is a guy he's pr pretty good uh in the states he's got uh what did he I don't know if he's he's placed at trials before. Um, but he's been like top four uh before. He's very like he's big. He's very <laughs> big. He cuts a lot of weight. He's a big guy. Um, but he he does kind of gas a bit, and that, that might be due to his uh his weight cutting, uh, I guess may, maybe strategies and whatnot. But uh yeah, he I ended up fighting him. He pulls guard and I pretty much pass multiple times, end up uh, just threatening him multiple back takes, end up taking them back. Um, and I I got like two, two, two scores off of that. So like two, technically two back takes. Uh, couldn't get the finish, but not a bad day uh, for, for the first day of ADCC. Um, and then... 
Second day, I had my teammate Chris Wojcik pretty much did the entire camp with him. Um, so we know each other's game very well. We actually, we also fought at trials um, in the semifinals as well. So we've, we've competed before. We train all the time. Um, that ended up go, going to judge's decision. I, I get the win. Um, and then I have a fucking war with Giancarlo. This bastard, <laughs> he just beats me every time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he's uh, he's he's very good at jujitsu. He's he's uh, very smart, um, as well as having a, a great team behind him. So it's kind of hard to just they they do their studying and stuff. You know, they they they're on top of everything. Um, they're professional, so it's uh, it's hard it's hard to beat the guy. Hmm. Yeah, he's good. He's big as well. He looks. Like. He was massive. Yeah, I saw on his. Uh, he, he he posted a picture. He was two hundred and twenty pounds when I fought him. I was one hundred and eighty five pounds. So I'm I'm like about ten pounds under underweight for uh, eighty eight, mm -hmm. which is eighty eight is eighty eight is eighty eight. I walk around maybe eighty eighty five kilos. I think. 84 85 um and then he was i don't even know what 220 is 220 is about that's 100 kilos i was about to say 100 kilos yeah yeah 100 kilos that's crazy <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's a big boy he's dense he's dense yeah he's, he's he looked big like yeah. when i seen him i was like fuck me jack yeah you know what i mean yeah, he's uh, as on top of being very good at jujitsu. It's fucking. It's hard to do anything to him. Yeah. Speaking of rule sets, what do you make of ADCC rule set? Because obviously you were able to pass his guard a couple of times, but it was obviously during the section where there was no points. How do you feel about how they turn the points on? Are you favourable of that, or do you do not like it? I like it when it works out in my favour. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> not on that occasion. No, I mean it's it's it can be frustrating at times. You know, it's like I. Like I passed quite a few times, but you know, these guys can just kind of get away with a lot of things. It's, it's very hard for these events to, um, or these pr promotions to kind of put together a rule set that doesn't encourage or have some sort of loophole, right? Like ADCC, th their whole thing is, oh, well, the first half of our matches are going to be no points because this will encourage the athletes to go for submissions and take more risks. And then the loophole is everyone just stalls <laughs> for the first half of the match. So it's not really half the match. It's just kind of feeling each other out and like just people just waiting until points essentially. Um, so it's, it's, it's pretty frustrating in that aspect. Uh, Cause like I, I'm, I pass his guard and he's like, oh, well, <laughs> so what? <laughs> you know? um, so, yeah, I mean, it's like, why am I threatening to pass his guard? Why, why am I wasting my energy if I'm not, I gain absolutely nothing at all from this. It's like, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. It's like, I feel like the only two events that were, that have done a good job of, not having some sort of loophole found yet is UFC Fight Pass, uh, Invitational, and then uh, CGI. Mm, it's like yeah. those are the only two events that it's like hard to find some sort of like ability where people can just like negate certain, I don't know, stalling or finding some some sort of tactic to slow slow the match down. Um, yeah, CGI done such a good job on that, don't they? Just from a spectator's point of view, just keeping the action going there was no point scoring. yeah and there's no point you know it's like all action 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 and if you weren't you were losing <laughs> simple yeah. as that you know yeah i think i heard nicky rod say that you were uh, thinking of packing on a few pounds now yeah yeah i mean it's i got home and immediately started lifting and like eating a bunch of weight uh just eating a bunch of like proper what i should have been eating pretty mm. much the entire time <laughs> uh, but uh yeah, it's it's just like if people are like, oh well, why don't you cut to seventy seven? It's if I if I cut to seventy seven, which I can, um, but it's like it's not gonna be fun, and I'm gonna be hungry, and it's not like I'm the level is changing necessarily. Like, okay, in eighty eight, I have Giancarlo, and then at seventy seventy seven, I, I cut all this weight, and then I have Mika. It's like I'm, I'm not I'm not avoiding anything. Like I'm fucked either way. I have to deal with it. I gotta figure it out. You know? Yeah. Um 
So I'm going to choose to gain a little bit of weight. You know, I'm going to eat a little bit more. You probably feel better as well. You know, training wise so. and everything else, yeah. you probably feel a lot better. Yeah, I think my my body will uh, will adjust. The main thing is just like constantly being sore from lifting. Um, like that's not fun. But aside from that, it's like I, I can deal with this. With a good protocol, though, mate, you can negate that a bit. You think so? 100%. Yeah, really, yeah, 100%, mate. Yeah, yeah, and you get used to it as well. If it's a new yeah. stimulus, you're always going to feel sore, right? For sure. But once for you sure. get into it and your, your body gets used to it, you'll be fine. Yeah, it's all good. Just getting a few more fry ups, mate, as well, and that'll power you through. <laughs> fry ups. What is this again? <laughs> English breakfast. Breakfast. English yeah, breakfast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, those baked beans, mate, and those... Uh, that was good. The English bacon. That was good. Oh, yeah, what about the... Ham. It's not <laughs> ham. <laughs> <laughs> Although they say that uh, apparently baked beans do cause a bit of wind, mate, so, um, <laughs> yeah. so watch yourself with those heavy lifts. Yeah, yeah. But no, it's all good. What are you thinking of, of doing? Just going kind of topping out that that division, or are you looking to go up in weight? Or staying like, in that weight, but just... Oh, it's going to be... I just want to get like... I don't, I don't even, Nick's like, oh, you get to, you get to 210, you're good. You cut those five pounds, you're good. I'm like, dude, I'm not going to be 210 pounds. Like, I don't want to be 210 pounds. Um, I'll be happy to gain like 10, 10 pounds. I'm, the thing is, I'm a natural athlete, you know? Me and Nicky and I, we're both natural athletes. We're doing this naturally. Um, this, and we talk about this all the time because it's fucking frustrating. Like, it's, it's hard going, like, we're constantly competing against guys that are, literally juice to the gills yeah. so it's like okay like and people are oh well it's not against the rules uh you're like i have morals <laughs> like i i don't want to die young you know i also like i told you guys I, I don't drink i don't do drugs i never have i never will steroid steroids is a drug i don't like putting things in my body i don't drink coffee you think i'm gonna put fucking steroids in my body it's like <laughs> dude but you can you can do it if you if you because your energy output's so high yeah. from your training. If you can you can eat a lot and lift and put on a good amount of yeah. muscle, I think pretty that, pretty pretty well. That's the main thing, really. Like eating, like that's the hard part. And also, like I, I'm I'm trying to do this clean. Like I don't want to get like uh, fat. don't want to get fat. Like I want like I've pretty much been eating two hundred to like two twenty sometimes 240 grams of protein a day. Not really keeping track of, of anything else right now, but I also, I did this for maybe a week, two weeks, and I lifted, not that I'm expecting to get bigger within those two weeks, but I have a feeling that I'm gonna have to up the calories immensely because I don't think I'm gonna grow like everyone else will. Yeah, you need the carbs in there as well, mate. The carbs, yeah. You need the carbs in there to fuel you, especially with the amount you're training. If you're not got the yeah. carbs in there, mate, you're just going to die. It's good tracking your, your protein. Yeah. You should definitely start tracking your carbs as well and get some good good carbs in there, mate. What, what would you recommend? Because essentially all I really eat is beef, bison, venison, uh, sweet potatoes, white rice. Uh, what else for carbs? regular potatoes that's yeah. pretty much yeah but that's like, not bad like no that's bad is it it's, no, it's so I, I, good yeah foods i really eat, try yeah. to stick to like whole foods yeah. if you're eating whole foods man like it's good it's just the timing of your carbohydrates and, yeah and, and things like that but it'd be pretty easy for you to do it so, so you're saying timing wise what, what would you recommend timing wise what so what for like a quick quick dose of carbohydrates mm -hmm. yeah so getting your carbohydrates in like 15 to 20 minutes in before you're like training mm -hmm. and then a good amount of carbohydrates Again, if you're trying to put on mass mm -hmm. um, in between those sessions and then okay. in the evening. Interesting. Yeah. Well, you don't want to be having like starchy carbs 15 minutes before you want to yeah. get oh, into yeah, something. Yeah. Not, like, not like sweet potatoes. Like <laughs> maybe like more like, like he, he's a big one for it, like Haribo. Oh, away. really? <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. Mate, literally in the boot of my car, I've got like a, a multi-pack of like little party bags of Haribo sweets. Sick. But if you don't want that, if you want to go whole foods, banana. Banana, yeah. Yeah, yeah banana. Yeah, that's honey. what I try to do. Some honey, yeah. like things like that. But yeah, I think like as long as you're tracking your calories mm -hmm. and trying to push those those calories higher, like, you know, and, you, and you, you're obviously not eating badly anyway. I think a bit the biggest thing when you say to people, eat more calories, they eat, they eat rubbish. Then they start turning yeah. to burgers and bread and stuff like that. If you're avoiding that a bit, 
I think you'll, yeah, for sure. you'll yeah. feel good while you're doing it. Yeah. And I think the tough thing as well is that protein is like really satiating, so it makes you feel really full. Yeah. So there's only so much fucking protein you can eat in a yeah. day. So that's where maybe sort of getting some good fats and some carbs and can lift the calories up and, yeah. and give you the sort of overall that's energy that availability that you need. Noted. Thank yeah. you. No worries, man. So you said that before ADCC, obviously Dima was helping you out and getting you to work on a few things. Mm-hmm. Are you happy to share any of like the prep and, and what you were focusing on before the event? Uh, yeah, I guess one of the main things was just the ability to negate leg, leg entanglements. Mm. Um, so in order to do so, I did a lot of training with my teammate, Chris Wojcik that I ended up fighting in the semifinals <laughs> and then also training with like, um, uh, Taylor Pierman. Um, he's so, so good. Mm. Um, but, uh, strategy wise, yeah, we just did like, uh, uh, Dima has this system he calls, uh, like rumble passing. It's more like, a uh, like. It's more like a concept than anything else, but it's more just like controlling hands, matching head height, um, and then like going for your passes, forcing them supine or whatever you're looking for from there. But just, yeah, con- like hand fighting properly and matching head height is essential um, just to negate any sort of leg entanglements. Um, and then just like looking for any sort of entry they have, immediate reset, like, uh, attention goes straight to that and then reset immediately. Mm-hmm. And then typically what's your, what's your, what would you consider your A game being? What's your kind of path to victory when you're out on the mat, what are you looking to, to do? Yeah, I mean, the goal for every match for everyone should be take the opponent down, pass the guard and submit them. Um, and I'd say most commonly it would be, you know, some sort of, I guess, let's just say they're, they're pulling because any takedown, like, for takedowns, I don't really have a strategy. Just kind of like flow out there. It's whatever comes. But uh, guard passes usually, you know, stuff from like split squat position, butter half, um, things like that, or, or like typical body lock. Um, and then that will usually lead to, especially in an ADCC rule set, usually lead to uh, back exposure. And then you know, I'll take the back trap hand, trap arms, mm. and then get get a rear naked strangle. Yeah, nice. And how about before you, you kind of go out and compete, have you got like a warm up routine or anything that you, you typically do? Yeah. Yeah. I try to, uh, yeah. I mean, comp day is usually like pretty much sleep all day until I'm, uh, you know, head, headed to the event, get there, uh, maybe an hour before, uh, I compete, uh, get like a hard, like a uh, full, like we call it first wind in wrestling, mm-hmm. uh, get the first wind, like blow your lungs completely out, get exhausted and then, you know, sit, recover for a bit. Uh, and then after that, we'll go through, uh, like common sequences that we plan on doing in the match. Um, certain, like, like for ADCC, I was, you know, doing the rumble passing. So I was, uh, hand fighting, matching head height, getting the angles. Um, and then going from there and then, yeah, in the back, we're just kind of drilling that maybe 30 minutes before the match. Um, and then after that, like w- walk out before we walk out to the mat. Uh, I don't know. Conjure a demon in a way. Um, yeah, think think about, uh, I don't think about good things. Think about the match, envision or, or visualize uh, and then walk out and do the thing. Go time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know watching you walk out of Polaris, you just, you looked very kind of vacant about what was happening. Very sort of focused in. Yeah. Yeah. I try, I try to, uh, like I, fo- obviously I'm, I'm focused on competing. So that's my main focus. I'm not really too worried about the crowd or anything. Um, and like people do things like, uh, given its, its preference. Like you see Owen, Owen Jones will like walk out there with his headphones on. I could never do that. I can't do that because I feel like music is good. And like he uses music to like hype, hype himself up, which is awesome. And it works for him. But for me, it's, uh, I, it's almost like, uh, it can be a distraction at times. And especially in a, in a place like, like uh, an arena full of 10,000 people that are all screaming. I don't want to take my headphones off and then be like, oh shit, there's 10,000 people <laughs> screaming at me. I want to like, I want to be present the entire time. I want to be in that environment and used to it. Um, so by the time I'm walking out, 
I've been here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've like already adjusted. Mm -hmm. So that's what I prefer. Um, yeah. Yeah, makes sense. No, that's good. And we obviously mentioned Dima a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Prior to him obviously taking on that camp for, for you guys at a B team, I hadn't heard of him before, but everybody speaks very highly of him. We've got him over uh, next month or the month after. Yeah, we got him over in November. Yeah, for a, for a seminar. Sick. So he's going to come over and, and, and work with us a little bit and, and come and have a chat. I mean, like, what's your what's your views of him as a coach? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think he's a great coach. I think, uh, I mean, I think me and Nicky Rod benefited immensely from, uh, you know, uh, uh, have, having someone to kind of look over. More, more than anything else, like, yes, he's obviously a great coach. And uh, he helped us with all the stuff technique wise and everything, but also like just for B team in general, I think it was good for the competitors just to have someone kind of overlooking and like almost just like just watching us, almost like forcing us to push ourselves even even past those kind of uh, like points where we're like, okay, this is this is hard, and then we just like push it just a little bit further uh, when you know you have that like your coach, like the guy that's like expecting high, high things from you, you know, forces you to push a bit more. Yeah, so I think that's good. I think he'd done it with, um, from the videos, it looked like he was pushing Nicky Ryan pretty, pretty hard. Yeah. Trying to get him like, yeah. trying to work but, on Like it. Nicky Ryan's got a low benchmark. So it's like, you know, <laughs> it's, easy, it's easy to push him <laughs> far. Um, yeah, Nicky Ryan, he, he um, I think Dima talked about this at some point, but Nicky Ryan had a, had a good camp. Um, until he, I believe he injured his knee about like halfway through and he had some issues with that. So it was kind of hard for him to continue, um, after that, uh, injury and yeah, I mean, it's, it's frustrating with Nicky Ryan. You know, he's, he's got he's so, he's so good. It's so frustrating. Even for me as, as a training partner of his, like I see how good he is. I train with him all the time. So it's like, I'm aware of how good he is. So many people don't understand or like uh like he he has trouble translate or can have some trouble translating to uh competition like all of his capabilities mm -hmm. um which is you know it's 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 frustrating but if he could do so he could easily be like the best grappler in the world he's very very good is he that good is he in the training room how do you get on with him I can't do anything to the fucking guy. <laughs> so I, can't, I can't take his back. I can't. I can't do anything. How how does that? It's it's, it's uh, that's a mental thing, isn't it? Because it's it's got to be a mental kind of yeah. block or mm, something. It's frustrating. It? Yeah, it must be frustrating for you lot, like knowing how good he is and being like trying to take it, trying to take his back. It's like uh, <laughs> it's like uh, it's like trying to grab that, like trying to hug that. <laughs> like, a, like a wet like that wet as well like a wet marshmallow <laughs> that's so funny yes that's, that's absolutely wild though isn't yeah. it to be like what, what's nikki's own perception of his ability does he does he know he's that good like what what is the barrier do you think he is immensely confident in his abilities really? yeah he talks so much shit <laughs> yeah he's, he's like uh yeah he talks so much shit what did you make of his uh, his performance at cji it's, it's frustrating. It's frustrating just because it's like, uh, like I said, I, I, I know he's so much more than that. Uh, as well as, you know, it's, it's frustrating because it's like, yeah, he's, he had a camp, but it's like at the tail end of it, it's like he couldn't really train as, as much as he could have been mm. um, without that injury. So that, that, you know, led to some issues with his, with his cardio and whatnot. Um, yeah, it's probably the worst matchup to start with as well, isn't it? With Tackett, where he's just everything, yeah. like gung-ho, just go, go, go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because he, he had the really good win against JT as well, didn't he, just before? Yeah. Which was awesome. Yeah. 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 Sub JT, JT had, had him been subbed in like, how long? It was like yeah. forever. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That's just frustrating with him. I just, I just, I just want to hug him. I haven't seen him since uh, CGI. He's been gone. Where's he's been, he gone? I think he's with Craig, just traveling. Oh, is he? Just yeah. gone traveling. Nice. Yeah. Probably clear his head a little bit as well. I guess so, yeah. Yeah. And then obviously CGI, obviously Big Bro, won the, uh, won yeah. the mill. The milly. Um, he, yeah, I mean, if, if I can get it, four for four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, four for so four. Um, strong. He had all, all rear naked chokes. Um, 
But he fought, he fought some big guys as well. Uh, Met that first guy. What was he called? He was massive. Was, was it Max? Yeah, Max His name something. Max. Yeah, Max something. And he, he looked massive. Yeah, he's a big guy. <laughs> he's like Uchi Nicky right into the wall. I was yeah, like, holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. A good, good, good performance. After that, he kind of made some, some adjustments. I think after that uh, first round, he made some adjustments and kind of like kind of cooled himself off a little bit and then uh just had like a, a reset after that first round and then it was just smooth sailing throughout the entire tournament from there you know it's uh but i felt like as soon as uh victor hugo got knocked out of like yeah, yeah like i think that was the only one in the final i thought yeah. that would have been a really good fight really good match it's crazy and nicky must have been rubbing his hands again <laughs> together as soon yeah. as he lost he was like yeah <laughs> <laughs> do you think he would have preferred that that final with, with victor yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's. Uh, I mean, he doesn't he doesn't lose much, but when he does, he would definitely you know want it back. Mm. So it's. Uh, I I definitely can see him wanting or being disappointed that that Victor lost as well. Um, but regardless, I, I think uh, Victor's. Uh, he's 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 cool. I, he's game as well. Like he doesn't. Uh, he'll go out and compete. Like he's not like one of those guys that are like. Uh, Oh yeah, I'll compete, and then like behind closed doors, he's like turning down fights and stuff. And I think he seems like a stand-up guy, so uh, I, yeah. I think that that match will happen sooner than any of the other matches that everyone wants to see out of Nicky Rod. Um, yeah, yeah, I thought with Nicky as well, and, and I don't know if it's like dad energy or just old age but I think back to his ADCC run when he first burst into the scene, and he seemed like an absolute wild man. Yeah. And then you look at his demeanor in CGI and he was very relaxed, obviously between rounds, just focused on his breathing. Like what's, what's, what's been that change, do you think? Well, I think before he was kind of forced to be like that. Like essentially his first ADCC run, all he really had was wrestling. Like, like that was it. All he could do was take the guy down, hope to get a back take and, and get a strangle. Um, and, you know, he, he was capable of, you know he had a lot of success with that strategy um but it's that's also been a very long time ago mm. so it's like people people are, are always like oh well he's just a wrestler he's got people people say i'll tell you this nico rat's not gonna like this i think pound for pound i was better than nicky rod a year ago and Yeah, pound for pound, I think I genuinely believe he would fuck me up in, in the training room. But I'm like pound for pound, I'm better than you. <laughs> I, I I knew it. I knew it in my bones, and uh, I truly think he's uh, the greatest greatest grappler in the world right now. I like pound for pound, he is he's he's terrifying. So what's made him like in a in a twelve month period? Then do you think? get so good is it just something's clicked and he's always more focused or it's that dad energy mate it's, yeah, it's <laughs> a dad, dad, it's dad yeah. dad. no i mean maybe ma maturing uh it's it's just been it, it's been a culmination of everything you know uh all the wins all the losses like everything he he truly like wants this and he's working towards it every single day um and you know and not many people see it like people on, on youtube they see like you know the they only see so much like yeah, they course, don't, yeah. I, I live with him you know so it's like i just i know how much this guy wants it it's uh it's almost like scary is it it's scary yeah but uh it's, it's just intense it's good does he keep does he keep you on track does he keep me on track yeah what do you no nah, he... Nah, he doesn't need to keep me on track no you know, we have the same goals yeah that's good. yeah yeah it's like uh i think must be a quite a good role model though to have absolutely absolutely yeah i mean like he uh he was like at some point he he was like yeah but before the whole cgi thing he was like i'm gonna stop smoking weed to give myself like um he was like i'll i'll, I'll continue smoking weed after i went adcc um and the whole cgi thing happened he wins a uh, cgi doesn't compete in ADCC and I'm like hey you told me after you went ADCC you're gonna uh you know you'll go back to smoking weed and he's like you know he 
he said, he said, he's like, I've had so much success. Why? Like he has no need for it. Um, it was just like, he put it down for like, for like almost like the greater, the greater good to like maybe push himself towards, towards ADCC gold. Um, but it's like, how about almost like he's like beyond it. Like it's, it's just nothing yeah, to it's just done now. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. It's wild. Do you think he'll, um, compete at the next ADCC or do you think he'll just keep doing CGI? If CGI continues, uh, every year, like I'm, I'm hearing it's going to go. If I was him, I would just do it every <laughs> yeah. year. It's like <laughs> me every year. Yeah. Hopefully. It's like, come on. Why would I not? You yeah. Know? Nah, it's cool. From what you hear from the inside, is it going to be that a million each year or is that going to change, you think? Any idea? Are oh, you saying money wise? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a million every year. I, I haven't talked to Craig. Yeah. I, I talked to him a little bit after after CGI and whatnot, but from what I'm hearing, they're going to do it every year. Not not every other year, every single year. Man, that would be so sick, innit? That, that like drives people. It's an absolute to, game changer, mate. That would drive young kids, everyone, because. Like people Jay like Jesus yourself sport. coming through, you're like, I can get my hands on a mini. Yeah. <laughs> like that's so that's, that's life changing for everyone, yeah. isn't it? Absolutely. And, uh, even the ten thousand to compete, yeah. just to be there, ten grand is ten yep. grand. Like that's way more. Like you, he already forced ADCC to give their contestants two and a half thousand. Yeah, show sure money. And yeah. they're still only two and a half thousand. You know, and if ADCC still wants to be relevant in the future, they're going to have to up their pay. Absolutely. That's because they will end up losing everyone. Yep. If they, if CJI added a couple brackets, like if they done like a, I don't know, like a, I don't know, an under 66, I don't know, and a, a over a hundred, I don't know, just like four. And then it wasn't maybe like a million or if they could get it to a million power one. But you know what I'm saying? Like you could then get the smaller guys and then you get the bigger guys as well. The strongest division you had in ACCC was under 66, wasn't That's it? That's what I mean. So, so Yeah, th that was the only untouched division, I believe, right? Yeah. But there was no point in them stepping up to the 80. Yeah. Because they were just too small. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And it's, it's, it's similar. Like I felt sorry for uh, William Tackett where he's like 90 fighting 115 yeah. kilo guys. He's the better jujitsu guy. But he didn't, want to, he didn't want to diet down and fight his brother. So it was like, he's in that awkward position. Whereas yeah. if they had an under 100 bracket, he would have been right in there, wouldn't he? Yeah, you know? mm. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But were you not tempted by CJI getting down to under yeah, 80? Yeah, I was, I was tempted. I was, I was definitely in between at the beginning. I was like, uh, Craig's, Craig's always coming up with some wild <laughs> stuff. I'm like... <laughs> Whatever this guy's doing, it's, it's up. He's up to no good. I'm just gonna stick to ADCC. <laughs> and then he, he came to he came to back home for like a day, and um, and then asked me, and I was like, ah, I don't know. And then like a bit after, I was like, Yeah, I might be interested. And then uh, it just, we just like never really followed through with it. Um, but uh, maybe probably in the future, I'd I'd be down. It's like I guess I've kind of. I meddled at ADCC. That's not gold. Do you want that gold? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I've got a, it's a pretty solid accolade. So it's like, all right, now I can like kind of dip my toes elsewhere if I needed to. So I guess I, I wouldn't mind going to CGI. Um, I'm also aware that the ADCC bracket was, my ADCC bracket was heavily affected from the... CGI brackets like they pulled a bunch of the 88 guys or Flanagan um, who else was pulled from 88 um, fuck I'm forgetting right now oh uh, Ty Rotolo Ty Rotolo or Flanagan um, Tackett would have been uh, yeah, William, Tackett. William, Tackett. William Tackett William Tackett would have been uh, Mateus Denise Right, mm -hmm. Mateus Denise. Uh, yeah, so I mean, a lot of big names were transferred over to CGI. Um, I benefited heavily from this. Um, <laughs> thank you, Craig. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I would like to compete against all those guys. So it's kind of like, yeah, I won second place or I got second place at a ADCC, but it's also like, it's not, it's not the same. It's definitely not the same. Yeah, I know what you mean, but again. It won't, your medal won't ever be like, ah, oh, it's second place ADCC on the year that CJ started. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. So, 
you've, you've won it, man. You shouldn't, you shouldn't uh, downgrade what you've won. Yeah, man. Tell us about, um, I guess, life before jiu-jitsu, because everybody knows you now through competing, through the B team, obviously through your various accolades, you burst into the scene, I think. Uh, the trials, I think you kind of got the first kind of big run, didn't you, at yeah. Blue Belt then, I think? Yes. Obviously, growing up in the, the Rodriguez household, mate, what was that like? Um, yeah, I mean, it was good. It, it was, uh, we grew up small town, um, in Jersey. We did, uh, grow up wrestling, riding dirt bikes, like, what else did we do? That's pretty much everything. I, I, uh, I think I started wrestling when I was about maybe seven or eight years old. Uh, Nikki Rod started when he was maybe in middle school i want to say like late middle school so like what age is that we don't have middle schools here mate <laughs> maybe like i i might be way off on this maybe like 14 okay like 14 13 15 something like that six year difference between you guys ish five five okay five years yeah so would that have meant you started first I didn't. He started first, but I started when I was younger because I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm younger than him. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. So I, we start wrestling. Um, he goes to. He ended up uh, doing well at wrestling. Uh, ended up going to like a, joining a, a club um, back home, uh, wrestling club back home. We both join. Um, I, I might as well tell the the records our records because I, I like talking about this <laughs> um he had he broke the school record high school record for uh for wins he had uh, he won districts which is like there's districts regions and then states so like districts is like tournament in, in your district small area region is like um there's eight regions in uh, the state of new jersey so it's a bit of a bigger tournament, higher level. And then the highest level is state. So it's just the entire state is wrestling against each other. Um, so he won districts one year. Um, and then he, he broke the high school record, very small school, but he broke the record, uh, with 111 wins. Um, uh, years go by. I am in high school and I, break his record <laughs> uh, i had uh i think two two-time district champ two-time region champ uh i never placed in state um but i had a very i, I still get nightmares to this day about this moment we'll talk about that but um yeah two-time district champ two-time region champ i had uh 136 wins um <laughs> I'll say that again, 136 wins uh, and like 17 losses or something. Uh, my nightmare in States was uh, I was like, I was the fourth seed. I was completely undefeated in my senior year. I'm pinning everyone. Um, and it was, it was perfect. It was Cinderella story. I was, <laughs> I was, I was going to go undefeated the entire season. And then first match I have in the state tournament. I, this is top top like 30 something grapplers in the world or in the world top 30 wrestlers in the state i take the guy down i'm like this is easy cut him so i like in wrestling you cut him so uh they can stand back up you can take him back down because you're confident in your ability to take the guy down take him down i'm, I'm getting more points <laughs> i'm just rack these points up i cut him and um uh, he pinned me immediately. <laughs> uh, yeah, that hurt. It still stings. I remember immediately running off the mat, crying. Um, and yeah, it still haunts me. Um, yeah, we grew up, grew up doing that shit. And then Nikki Rod... Nikki Rod per started pursuing grappling when I was in like junior or senior year. Um, so while I'm wrestling... He's blowing up and I'm like, fuck college. I'm, I'm not going to go to college. Uh, I'll just do this. Um, and uh, yeah, I graduate, graduate high school. I'm like, I'm going to give myself a year, dedicate this year to this sport. If it works out, it works out. If not, I'll go be a normal person. <laughs> um, 
and it, it worked out, I think, uh, a year and a half after just every single day of training uh, jujitsu, I won trials. Um, and then from there, I was like, this is it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, man. That's cool. And and like growing up with Nikki, with you both like wrestling and stuff, was he like, was it like competitive or was it a supportive relationship between the two of you? Yeah, I'd say we were, we, we had like a typical like, I we were just siblings, like always arguing and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And then when I, when we both got into wrestling, we really kind of calmed down a bit and uh, it almost like, I guess, bonded us. Mm -hmm. um, we got a lot closer after that, I'd say. Um, and then, yeah, it's kind of been, been like that ever since. Yeah, sick, man. And and then when you were wrestling, so when you were younger, like jujitsu and grappling, mm -hmm. you obviously would have had ADCC, but you know, a lot of professional jujitsu as we know it now probably didn't really exist so much. Yeah. Obviously you had UFC and, and MMA. What was your like view or perception of jujitsu as, as a sport being a wrestler? I had up? no clue what jujitsu was going really? up. Yeah, no clue. Yeah, I was just, I was just trying to take guys down. When, <laughs> yeah, I just enjoyed wrestling. Yeah, yeah. I had, I had no clue essentially what jujitsu was until Nick started competing in, in jujitsu. Um, and then after that, it was like, you can make money doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do this. I, I want to wrestle. Why why wouldn't I just grapple for the rest of my mm. life? This is awesome. I, yeah. I like wrestling. I like practicing every day. Why would I not do this? And then I imagine the the extra bits of jujitsu makes it even more addictive. Absolutely. It? It's it's just like a whole new, like, uh, like you, you have wrestling. Wrestling is a great base to grappling. But then there's so many more, like, just areas to go to it's 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 infinite it's infinite it's yeah. so addictive isn't it? yeah it's, it's awesome it's, you having that wrestling base so must have made such a difference it must yeah. accelerate your jiu-jitsu massive i absolutely i definitely agree but everyone's everyone always kind of dis discredits the wrestling to, to an extent there was like oh well he's only been doing jujitsu for like as of right now i've been doing jujitsu for like three and a half four years and they're like oh he's, he's only been grappling for three and a half four years but he's been wrestling for for forever you know since he was born well yes i was wrestling but there's also been other wrestlers that are way better than me and can translate it into jujitsu. There's also been other wrestlers that are, that started younger than me and can't translate it to jujitsu. So it's like, we have something different. Like we're not the highest level wrestlers, like by far, like we're, we're good. Like I didn't go to college. I never got any offers for wrestling. You know, so Nikki Rod went to, went to college for a year. That's for, uh, and uh, wrestled in, in college for a year, so it's like we're not very high level as as everyone kind of uh, yeah almost perceives us to be. There was one about uh, Pixley. He was like a D one wrestler, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah, and like he's supposed to be a ridiculous. I think Banner was saying he was D two, wasn't he? Was he D two? Yeah, no, D two so. champ. Sorry, yeah, yeah, was, yeah sorry, D two champ. Yeah, so still v like yeah. very high level. N Nicky Rod was D three, um, which is still like still good, but it's. There's there's levels, you know. There's levels. Do you think that the fact that you you guys want the absolute top echelon of wrestling is giving you that lack of um, how can I put it? Like, you know, if like your glass is full with a style of of, of grappling, hmm. trying to then un unpick some of that to to put some jujitsu into that might be quite difficult. Do you think the fact that you guys want there has helped you transfer across to jujitsu or, or grappling more? I don't know if it was necessarily that. I would say the main thing that I, I can't say for Nikki Rod, but I would say for me, I feel like the main thing is the mindset from wrestling. Like I transfer the competition experience and the mindset more than anything else from wrestling technique, whatnot. Like my, my coaches were not very high level. Like it was like, I it was like some one, one of the coach like actually cared. He was good. And then the other coach was like, just like some drunk dad that would like <laughs> coach us. Like it was a very small school. It's like, it's not, it's not, we're not very, I don't know. I don't know. It's just main things that I get from wrestling competitions experience and 
like dog, you know, yeah. heart. Um, a lot, you can't, it's hard to kind of teach that for wrestling forces you to have that. Yeah. I imagine as well, like you said, so many matches, like you're on about, you had hundred and something wins. Yeah. How many, how many wrestling matches did you have throughout those years of wrestling? Yeah. It been yeah. Ridiculous. Mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. Ridiculous. And all the wrestlers that we talked to on this podcast, they all have a huge amount of mat time. Yeah. Like before they've even started jujitsu, such yeah. a good base, isn't it? Like you said, it gets the, the training as well for, to be a wrestler is like super hard. And yeah. Compared to like jujitsu, it's like <laughs> just turn up and do jujitsu. Yes, <laughs> it's you boys, so it different. Be. It's so different. Yeah, it's almost frustrating. Like the culture um, that you get from like a jujitsu gym to like like we you can get kind of close to it in in a, a camp. Like how Dima had us. Like some of the high heart rate days. It's like this feels like a wrestling practice. Mm -hmm. But aside from that, it's like like going into like a like a hobbyist gym. It's like so different do you not think so jiu-jitsu would benefit though from changing that mindset as it gets more professional and more money's involved do you think people will start integrating that type of wrestling mindset into it and do you think if the people if people do start integrating that and start seeing results it will start changing you know if if you for example you guys if you was to do that a lot and try and make it more of a, like a wrestling camp-ish yeah. feel I I don't know because I think with a lot of jujitsu, like, like this is one of the things as well. It's like, uh, there's like a wrestling pace that you, you bring to wrestling mm -hmm. and there's a, like a jujitsu pace. And I think those are two different things. And you have to use that wrestling pace when you're wrestling. If you use a wrestling pace in grappling, a lot of times you can put yourself in a lot of danger. So I try to separate the two, you know, when I'm passing guard, I have a different pace as opposed to when I'm wrestling. Um, I, you know, early in competition, I would make that mistake. And I think I've, I've done a good job of negating making that mistake. But, uh, I think you, you need that jujitsu pace for a lot of jujitsu. Um, and for, for competitive gyms, I would say potentially, yeah, like that wrestling kind of, you know, you're, you're in camp getting ready mm -hmm. for competition. That's one thing. That's, uh, that's a possibility, but for like, just like a typical, you know, you're going in there to like learn, I would say maybe not, not as much. It's frustrating. Yeah. It's yeah. frustrating. Just think about the professionalism of it. And like, I even think what like MMA fighters put themselves through and everything else. And I always feel jujitsu is like, you ju we just all seem a bit lazy yeah. included. Like, it's just like technique, technique, technique. And then you have that thing of like, oh, if you've got really good technique, you shouldn't need to work too hard. But realistically, if they're as good as you, you need to work fucking hard. You know, you need yeah. to work as hard because else they're just going to, they're going to smash you. Absolutely. They work harder. Yeah, I quite like the fact it's chilled personally. <laughs> I like working too hard. <laughs> Mate, you're known for your flexibility as well. Like some of the, uh, especially against Mika, like getting out of the, that arm bar. Oh, mate, yeah. I mean, it was just insane flex. In fact, there was a guy on Polaris. I don't know if you saw it from the back, but he got caught in an arm bar and kind of tried doing the same escape and just got his elbow snapped. Nice. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so that sucks. Yeah. But, yeah, obviously, very flexible guy. Is that like a natural thing? Is that like a typical wrestling attribute? Where does that come from? Um, I think quite a bit of it is, is natural. Mm. Um, and yeah, I guess it's just almost, almost genetic. Um, there's a lot of like, yeah, like Nicky Rock can do a lot of the same things that I can do. Yeah, okay. Like he's like big, like muscular guy. So you would assume like, oh, it's zero mobility. He's, he's very, uh, same hip mobility, same shoulder, shoulder mobility. Um, so yeah, I, I think quite a bit of it is, is genetic. We also like push ourselves in like, like, uh, like when I first, for example, when I first started doing the buggy choke, absolutely could not hit it. And I kind of forced myself, uh, to progressively get, you know, more flexible and whatnot. So our bodies kind of adapt, um, over time to what we need. Um, so a little bit of both. Yeah. And do you do any specific mobility work or is it just literally just in training? It's usually very like specific for the position. Like if like I mentioned buggy choke, if I'm going to be doing the buggy choke, it'll be like, I'll make sure I'm warming up, like doing almost pretty much like a buggy choke, but like solo and just like stretching my, my torso and stretching my, uh, 
my hip and my knee. I'll get into like a deep squat and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, I call it frog stance, but, um, yeah, just like making sure I was like stretch out knees, hips, Mm -hmm. um, that more than anything else. Yeah. So you're not doing hours of like hot yoga or anything then? No. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, mate, what, why the buggy joke? You're obviously well known for it and you've hit it, I think, like three times in comp, I think. Three? I def- I've definitely hit it two times. I'm trying to think of another time. I don't know. I've definitely hit it two times. Yeah, I think I looked at your BJJ Heroes record and it said three. My mom keeps sending it to me. <laughs> so quite a bit of it is wrong. Um, but yeah, you're obviously a fan of the buggy joke yeah, nonetheless. Like, yeah. what, what was it about that particular submission okay. that, that, that forced you to, to maybe focus on it for a so, bit? So I told you guys about the wrestling nightmare. Yeah. This is the jujitsu nightmare. Um, so Flow Grappling had a uh, show that they were producing, Who's Number One, or no, not Who's Number One, Who's Next is what they were calling it. So Who's Next, it was like 16 grapplers um, and like, the thing was like uh 16 up and coming grapplers they're all gonna uh fight or have matches uh sub only no time limit um and uh yeah they they match us up i have uh first match renee souza so if you guys don't know he's uh he just does the buggy choke that's pretty much his main move (laughs) um I had played around with buggy choke before that match, but I was like, this ain't shit. Like this is a fake move. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, he buggy choked me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so match match was, I feel, I want to say less than five minutes. Um, I am harassing this man, take him down, take his back. He escapes back control, pass his guard by like pass. Um, and then he puts me in a buggy choke. I'm like, I posture up, fucking squirming, trying to shrug this guy off of me. He subs me, and I'm like, wow. Like, this was this was a show. Like, this was supposed to be, like, this could have been very good for me to win, you know? Isaac, Michelle ended up winning, actually. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was just, it felt like a very good opportunity and to lose first round was very frustrating. And more than anything else, losing by a buggy choke was enraging. Um, I'm fucking, they got me on camera crying and shit, <laughs> pouring my heart out. Really? And uh, yeah. And then uh, I've, I go home, train the next day. I'm, t- I'm practicing the buggy choke, <laughs> from practicing escapes. Um, and then... A couple months after that show, this was before the show was aired. The The show aired after trials, so it's kind of a bad look for me in a way. But the show was filmed a few months before ADCC trials. And this was the trials where I went seven for seven on subs and got the buggy choke in the finals of that tournament. So leading up to after after that time I got buggy choked leading up to that entire camp for ADCC trials. I was practicing the buggy choke um, and kind of like, I guess, inspired in a way to hit the buggy choke and ended up getting it in the finals. Um, So that worked out. Um, And then actually right after that, I competed again on like a small event, uh, finishers finishers in uh, in somewhere on the East Coast. and uh yeah i got like a i got another buggy choke <laughs> close guard buggy choke um yeah <laughs> obviously you've experienced it and you just kind of explained like, your emotions afterwards but it must be fucking soul destroying getting tapped with a buggy choke it's you know it's a legit move it's frustrating when you don't understand like uh we were talking about uh maybe what were we talking about when we were grabbing food feeling hopeless yeah it's more like uh frustrating when it's i don't know what to do more than anything else like that's Mm. that's the main thing that's like i don't know i don't i ever want to be in a position where i'm like i don't know what to do here Mm. um and i feel like i've only ever been there twice which was in the buggy choke that time and then in reverse close guard with William Tackett at trials, um, 
when he got that that uh, toll hold on me. Um, but those type of scenarios really inspire, you know, me at least to pursue and like get comfortable in these positions mm. and f- like play around, find out what's going on, find out ways to get out, find ways to counter, find ways to be offensive. Mm. Um, so. Yeah, and do you do you enjoy working off your back, being from that wrestling background? Do I enjoy working off my back? Yeah, playing guard game. I know it's not typically your 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 kind of approach to matches. Yeah, I like. I I definitely like playing around with it. I like. Uh, I think if I'm going to be on bottom, I, th- I guess like wrestling up w- would be ideal. But the buggy choke is like, it's it's not high percentage, obviously. Mm-hmm. But the main thing is like uh, even my, my training partners, they know like, okay, if I pass the side control and I leave my head on the outside, J-Rod's probably going to go for a buggy choke. <laughs> so most of the time they either ha- – force it forces them to leave their head on the center line um, and usually it makes it uh, harder for them to pin me or it's like I can – if they do have their head on, uh, off to the side, I can threaten the buggy choke. They start kind of framing, and then I use that that space to then escape and whatnot. So it's like the buggy choke is more of like a, like a segue to other things as mm-hmm. opposed to uh, like an actual offensive movement. It's really hard to be offensive with the buggy choke. <laughs> um, with that being said, please buy my DVD on bjfnx.com, buggy, buggy PDM. <laughs> 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 um yeah <laughs> yeah no I, yeah I, i've not been buggy choked it's not, really yeah it, i'm sure i i i I'd, I'd be able to be both buggy choked no problem but i've just not come against anybody with the flexibility or the desire watched, to do my it my first ever comp when i first started jiu-jitsu i watched uh zach used to be in our gym someone buggy choked him really in a white belt comp and he <laughs> stood up and he's going blue like this guy and he's like <laughs> refusing to be tapped by it. and he just stood there shaking him off and eventually the guy let go and i thought how did he not go out with it? Honestly, yeah. he was blue. I was like, he's going out. He's going out. But fair play to him. He didn't. Yeah. He didn't want to tap to it because it was like that much. Yeah, but I have, I have been against people before that just do like random shit from positions that they shouldn't be doing stuff from. Yeah, and it it just absolutely stifles like my offense. Yeah. So I completely get what you're saying about just having that there as a threat. Yeah, just absolutely. will allow you to be more offensive in every area. Sure. I love a reverse triangle from side control. Mm. That's my like little go-to at the moment. Really, it's like kicking your leg over the top, pushing the head down a little bit, and then snapping it up. I get that on a lot of people at the moment. Really? Yeah. I feel, yeah. Like, you should, I feel like you shouldn't be getting caught with that shit. Man, I get people all the time <laughs> with it. Really? You need to have a word. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard though because if you, you know, like I use that as a bit of a bait. I like push your head down, and then they'll go, they'll kind of go down. I'll just hold them there, and then I'll just kick it up but the arm's got to be through the legs first so you should know not to put your head anywhere near those fucking hips if your arms are the legs (laughs) people do and when they're tired hopefully they'll learn mate I I wanted to go back to like that transition to jiu-jitsu because I wanted to hear about your very first jiu-jitsu lesson if you can remember it very first jiu-jitsu lesson when you first walked into the jiu-jitsu gym was it with Nicky Rod or was it somewhere else um okay very first jiu-jitsu lesson so it was like when I when I like fully committed to grappling, I was, I had graduated high school. And then right when I, right before I graduated, COVID had, had uh, like shut everything down. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to go work at a warehouse and I'll save up a bunch of money. A few months from now, everything, everything's going to be, the gyms will be open and uh, I'll just start from there. A few months go by. Um, and I started with uh, at a gym called uh, Studio 84 with um, Jay Rigabuto. Um, he was, I guess, like my first coach. He was also Nicky Rod's first coach uh, over in New Jersey. Um, and he kind of, uh, he just pushed us in the right direction um, as well as being a very good coach at the time. Um, he's, su- he's super... Uh, he commentates a lot as well. Mm. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure you guys have heard his voice before. Um, first lesson. I, I can't remember first lesson, but I can remember a first instance where I was like beating up people that I probably shouldn't be pe- beating up. Um, uh, I, I, first few uh, like weeks of training, um, I was a white belt. I was training at Studio 84 
we're doing live rounds. I'm just taking people's backs and choking them because that's all I know how to do. Um, obviously, terrible technique, but still getting the job done. And uh, I remember I, I just I remember killing this guy. And then I go and my coach comes up to me. And he's like, uh, you know who that was? And uh, I was like, no. He's like, yeah, he's like a purple belt world champion. Um, and I was like, oh, sick. He's terrible. Um, <laughs> and uh, right then and there, I was like, I could probably do this. This is really good for me. <laughs> it was like some like I probably IBJJF, uh, like not that big of a deal. Yeah. And was this gay or no gay? Oh, no. I've never trained in the gi before. Never trained in the gi? No. I've seen you tying up. Someone tying a belt for oh, you. Oh, tying them, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're at like weigh-ins waiting for like all the media stuff to begin. And um, and Tynan's like making fun of me. He's like, man, you, you really don't know how to tie a belt. I was like, no, but you could teach me. <laughs> he, he gives me his gi. I put it on. He finds a purple belt somehow. And uh, he like tied it for me. I taught me how to tie it. Um, I don't think I remember now, but <laughs> who, who do you uh, get belted by these days? I was, I got my blue belt by Jay and then I got my purple belt from Craig Jones. So will you get your next belt off Craig? I don't know. I no. guess whoever <laughs> gives it to me, Craig or Nikki Ryan or Nikki Rod. Um, so mate, at this point, what have you got to do as a purple belt to get a brown belt? I was, I was just talking about that. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I don't, I didn't even think about it until I was getting messages like, dude, you're still a purple belt. I know you shouldn't be talking about getting promotions, but come on. Yeah. <laughs> like, whoever's giving you the belt, like a silver ADCC and you're, yeah. you're you know, it is, you're right. a purple it is. belt is, it's a bit unfair. Really. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to a purple belt comp, mate, it's sandbagging. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Yeah, but I think outside of IBJJF, it literally doesn't matter, does it really? No, of course Yeah, not. especially for Nogi, it's like... Uh, it's a bit, bit of a different world. But do the do the belts even matter in no gi? In, in competition, not at all. It's like there's there's just no point. It's like uh, I feel like the main benefit in in my head, at least, the main benefit for having belts is for like hobbyists, right? So kind of like lures hobbyists in to like. Oh well, you're a white belt right now, but if you train with us for six months and you pay us this fee every single month. You'll, you'll get your blue belt in probably six months and then they get a stripe and they're like, oh, I'm so close. And then they're just there making, you know, gyms making money off of them and whatnot. Um, some of the gyms even like have these people pay for their belts and stuff. It's like. Hey, the Brazilians are great at it. Yeah. The, the Brazilians have got a great business model, mate. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think you're right with that, mate. And then when did you, um, when did you like sort of meet up with Nikki and start training together? Was that, was that a new wave or? Nikki, Nikki Rod. Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I so I was training at Studio 84 yeah. for about a, maybe about a year, a year and a half. Probably like a year. Oh no, maybe less than a year, holy shit. Yeah, uh, probably cl close to a year coming up on a year. Um, and th they had, uh, while I began training, they had all moved to uh, Puerto Rico. Um, while they're in all in Puerto Rico, I'm not allowed to train with the DDS. I was never allowed to train with with the DDS. Yes. So uh, John had essentially banned me um, from training with the DDS due to uh, <laughs> this is a long story. So um, when I was wrestling in high school, uh, senior year regions, John asked Nicky Rod how I was doing in wrestling. Nicky Rod's like, oh, he's good, except he has herpes on his forehead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have herpes. I had impetigo, which is just another skin infection. Yeah. It's, it is disgusting, but it's a skin infection, <laughs> not herpes. Um, and then uh, John's like, got it. Your brother has herpes. He's never training with us, essentially. Um, and then um, it's, it's crazy. Well, he actually right? wouldn't let you train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Legit. I... This is this is what happened. So I um, training in, in Jersey. They go to move to Puerto Rico. And Nick's like, "Yo, can you help me move to Puerto Rico? Come, come, you know, for a week, two weeks, train with us while you're here." Uh, especially because he had the dog. He had a dog, and he was uh, just moving. Need needed a hand. So I'm like, for sure. Like, why would I not? Um, so I come. I train two days, third day, I go into training in Puerto Rico and John wasn't there. He was traveling for something. Uh, and then, uh, 
somehow John, they probably saw like a photo or something of, of the training training room. Um, John told Gordon, Gordon told Nikki Rod, and Nikki Rod told me that I couldn't train at when I walked into training. So essentially beginning training, I show up, start drilling, and Gordon calls Nikki Rod over, whispers in his ear. Nikki Rod comes over to me, he's like, you can't train, I don't know why, this is fucking retarded. Um, <laughs> I'm like, I, I can't drill right now. And he's like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, so super, super awkward uh, situation. Um, and yeah, I, I just pretty much just sit off to the side of the mass ball. Nikki, I, I'm not gonna, like we drove to training. I can't drive back. It's like Nikki Rod, you know, he's a professional. He has to do his training. Um, so you just sat there. I just sat there awkwardly for like yeah like two or three hours the entire session sat there and at, like after like like taza damien all the all the guys are like hey like why didn't you train what's going on and i'm like i don't know <laughs> i don't know <laughs> um so yeah that happened john didn't want me training because he thought i had mad herpes <laughs> we go a step further we go a step further so we're like okay he doesn't believe us i go to my doctor and I get the paperwork saying what I have, that like the diagnosed paperwork saying that I have uh, in Patego, that all the medication, whatever the fuck. Mm -hmm. And uh, print that paperwork out, give it to him. He's like, this is fraudulent. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Yeah. So no way. yeah, I just <laughs> couldn't train with them. I went home after like, you know, a week of, of being there or something. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's wild, isn't it? Why well, he just thought you had herpes and we were an eighth fucking yeah. herpes, basically. Is, is this the real reason why the team split, mate? Because of the, the herpes oh, situation? God, you guys don't want to know why. We really do. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people, yeah. I can't, I can't say. It's, no. it's not It's not my place yeah, to say, yeah. but... Uh, it's crazy. Yeah, there's, it? it's, it's way deeper than mm -hmm. any herpes. herpes. <laughs> <laughs> way worse than herpes, so it must be bad. Yes. Oh, <laughs> man, that's insane. It's absolutely crazy, isn't it? Think how good the, the Danaher death squad would be now if it didn't split. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of glad. I'm kind of glad. Um, I think I think the split, though, gives other people room to grow. Um, yes. I genuinely believe that because Absolutely. personalities do stunt other personalities. You see it in, in football and all different types of sports. You know, you have the head guy there or like you would have been Gordon. Like if he was for the if Nicky, for example, was getting beat by Gordon for X amount of years before Nicky got as good as he's got, it may not. He may not have got as good as he's got. You yeah, know, he might have deterred him, and he might have been like, oh, you know, yep. in his head and stuff like that. Because a lot of elite sport as well is mental, isn't it? Absolutely. But obviously, the split certainly hasn't hindered Nicky Rod in any way. Oh, shape no, or form, that's what I mean. I, no, that's what I mean. He's bloomed. He's got yeah, better. Yeah. Whereas if he was still there, he'd always be like under Danaher, yeah. number two yep. to Gordon. You know. Whereas now, we'd love to see that fight, wouldn't we? Absolutely. <laughs> Do you think Gordon uh, Gordon accept? Never. No, no, no. I mean, with the response that he gave, uh, I didn't see it, but it's like uh, I've heard that like he's got all these rules and stipulations. So it's like he's almost like canceling himself out. What, what was he said? He, he said he long sleeve rash guards and spats. Yeah. No time limit. Was it no time limit? Probably. Yeah. yeah. Was it like a no time limit Probably, one. So you yeah. just Philippe Penner just try and wear him out mm. like that. Um, I don't know what else. Yeah, I can't remember what else yeah, he I said. That was the big ones that I yeah. took away from what yeah, he said. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's uh, oh, he's like uh, I think if his stomach hurts and he can't, or like the week of competition, we're gonna have to postpone it, something like that. <laughs> um, this is this also just would have heard. I, I didn't personally like see it myself, but uh, has it, has it been like dialogue or is it just what he's put out on socials? It's not like I think it's just what he's put on on socials, I believe. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't think he'll ever ever take a fight against Nicky Rod. It's like, last one was too close. Um, mm -hmm. And N Nicky Rod's only getting better. So it's like, and like Gordon hasn't, he's great. But he, like his last two performance against uh, Pena and then um, Yuri, Yuri Simos, it's like not the best perform performances he's, he's had. Mm -hmm. um, so, I don't know. Yeah, who knows? Maybe. 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 Tell us about training at B team then, mate. So obviously the, the guys moved down to to Austin. It's down, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Down. Down, down, down yeah. yeah. Most most for most places down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, and obviously set up the team and 
obviously the the team is becoming well it's probably the biggest most well team known known team on the planet now i think yeah, I think it definitely is. Yeah, and you've got obviously the, the the competition success, but obviously the YouTube channel and the, the the exposure and the footage as well. How's training been done at B Team? Yeah, training's training's always good at B Team. Uh, I feel like one of the main benefits from training at B Team is the fact that we there's pros and cons. Obviously, we always have visitors, so we always get to experience new like uh, or different like styles. Almost like we get to train with. We have guys from AOJ, they come in, visit. We have guys from Ten Planet, do their rubber guard, hoopla, whatnot. <laughs> um, yeah, it was just variety, variety, good good training, as well as high-level round, like world-class rounds uh, at your disposal. Um, so it's, it's, it's really hard to top a room like that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very thankful to be given the opportunity to train at a room like that. Very thankful for... Nicky Rod allowed me to live in his house. <laughs> <laughs> and then how do you feel about the, the, the exposure? Obviously it's, you know, the, there's most gyms have kind of closed doors, you know, so what happens in the training room stays in the training room. Yeah. But obviously with B team, a lot of the footage is put out, yeah. you know, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a fishbowl, isn't it? Like everyone yeah. sees what's going on. how do you feel about that? Uh, I mean, another thing, it's like kind of pros and cons. I really like that. Uh, I mean, the exposure is much needed, especially um, when it comes to like, competition if you see someone competing on the mats and you know one of the people or one of the guys and you don't know the other guy you're most likely going to be rooting for the guy that you know mm -hmm. so it's like it's it's good that people know b team is good that people know us that they always see us um exposure is great um but at at some points like it, it is good to have some sort of uh almost like I don't know, like, like um, I think Mika ha had mentioned he was like studying uh, me by watching the B Team YouTube channel mm. or something like that. Mm. So, so it is. There's pros and cons, you mm -hmm. know. That's kind of bound to happen when you have just your training rounds at at anyone's d disposal, pretty much. Um, is that cameras out all the time? Is someone always oh, recording, or is it? There's security cameras all the time, and almost every day there's a cameraman filming for the YouTube video. So yeah, they're just looking for highlights, looking for. Do people put it on more if the camera's pointed a certain way? <laughs> like, oh, yes. we're going to record yeah, this round, and it's like full steam ahead. Yeah, sure yeah. always, surely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll I'll do that as well. It's like. I haven't posted a reel in a while. I guess I should probably throw this guy. <laughs> <laughs> it always makes me laugh for your brother and you see some like big meathead come in. He might be like a blue belt or a purple belt. Yeah. Like, absolutely. Like double legs. And it's all <laughs> and I'm like, poor bastard. Yeah. Or, like just picks him up and dumps him. And I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> What's Nicky Rod like to train with? Because I know Craig often jokes about the fact that he can only manage about one one round a month now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one round, it's more like one one round a year with <laughs> Craig. I haven't seen him in, he hasn't been home. I, I've seen him for, I, I've seen him in, in Austin for like two or three days this year. Um, so he hasn't been home in ages. Um, but, uh, sorry, what was your question? What's it like to roll with Nicky Rod? Rolling with Nicky Rod. That's right. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not fun. It's not fun. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, I hate to say this. He's, he, like I said, he's gotten a lot better. He, last time we trained, this day before I leave for this, this competition, he buggy chugged me twice. <laughs> <laughs> you can buggy chugged me twice. Is it on camera? <sighs> I'm sure he has it. <laughs> <laughs> He's got it somewhere. Yeah, I mean, every everything's on camera. So we have like, I think we have like 16 security cameras like wrapped around the uh, the mat space. So pretty much all angles uh, of everything on the mat is being filmed at all times um, on top of the cameraman like recording certain, certain rounds and whatnot. So... Uh, there's definitely footage out there <laughs> of the bug of the buggy jokes. <laughs> <laughs> who's your uh, who's your favorite and least favorite training partners? You may have just answered the latter, to be fair. Yeah, so le least training, uh, least favorite training partner. Not that he's a training partner anymore, but Craig, 
Craig is absolutely terrible. Um, he's, uh, if people call me a spaz, he popped my arm. My, my arm cracks every morning because of this guy. Um, I had him in a, in a fully locked uh, Yoko, so like a, like a side triangle. I've got proper finishing mechanics. You have it locked up. You go reach for the, for the arm that is trapped. You grab that tricep and pull it across to help finish the choke, right? I go do that. I'm pulling it across. And as he's doing that, or as I'm doing that, he locks up a Kimura and then just pops my arm just one big pop and i was like nice, nice. <laughs> this is good this is good um yeah he's a he's like like wiry strength like people are like oh they so big and strong no craig is fucking strong craig is like um craig will did i just break this no just lift it a bit higher to okay. it like, sorry about that keep going keep going push it up push it up there you go and then it just kind of holds ah yes uh so yeah um Craig's got like wiry strength. He'll like, um, he just grabs something. And if, if he doesn't want to let go of it, yeah, if he doesn't want to let go of it, you're not going to get your arm back. It's, it's, like it's a scary. Chim, like a chimpanzee. Yeah. Yeah. That's really what it feels like. Um, I think that's what Owen Jones said to me. He said like, Craig's a bully. He's like, Craig is the gym bully. Like yeah. if, if you want to get like, absolutely like heart, go with Craig. Yeah. <laughs> You got all these poor Eastern Europeans that are just hobbling around now. Oh man, he said it recently, yeah. didn't he? He said like in these seminars, he's like just breaking their knees now. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> he's like a chimpanzee, but he knows heel hooks. Yeah. That's scary. Yeah, that's a scary combination. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely least least favorite. Okay. Uh, train and favorite. Sure. Favorite. Uh probably Ethan Krellstein or. Mm. Or Nicky Rod or Nick Mattia. Um, so, yeah, we all know Nicky Rod. Uh, Ethan Krosin, he's another gym owner. Mm -hmm. um, he just competed at 66 for ADCC. He was, uh, I believe he won one match, um, but he's, he's so scrappy. He's so scrappy. I love I love training with him every every single day. Uh, if if my body can keep up with it, I'll train with him till I die. It's it's so much fun. Uh, we just try our hardest all the time, and it's just fun. I I truly enjoy it. Um, and then with Nick Mattia, uh, he is a he is the one of the best grapplers that doesn't have like uh it doesn't really have a name because it doesn't have much uh competition success but i guarantee you that will soon change um he no one knows who he is he like right now right now he is one of the best grapplers in the world uh -huh. right now yes he's very fucking good he fucks me up sometimes <laughs> like he's he's very good uh he's about my weight um yeah he's about my weight he's got like he's good wrestling um i think he's got like a few holes at, uh but once he like kind of covers those things i think he's going to be a force to be reckoned with uh in the scene very soon very soon he's also a dog i like i said tries very hard he also has a full-time job um and comes into training every single day he's absolutely shredded um he's natural i believe he's natural as well um but he does not look natural he's a freak of nature um yeah he's he's like uh like captain america <laughs> we'll look out for captain america yeah, yeah. keep an eye out for that that's cool man how old is he I want to say maybe 26, 27. Okay. So you've yeah. still got plenty of time then. Yeah. 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 Shit, man. That's cool. Um, you obviously mentioned herpes. Blue Basement was notorious for infections. Yep. The BT Mall is like one of the sweatiest places on the planet. Mm -hmm. Like, how was that to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, we don't really have too many... Uh, so our skin infections they'll, they'll come in like uh, like waves um what with the mats and whatnot like i think when we first got our mats uh our new mats a lot of people were getting abrasions on their knees so there was like a lot of uh like skin stuff going on and then it'll come in waves where like 
okay, there's like all the competitors will get some funk, you know, some sort of uh, weird looking marks on their body and we'll all hide it from each other, but we'll all like talk <laughs> shit behind each other's backs. <laughs> um, but usually that, that'll stay in like the the professionals like kind of group. Um, and then we also have an issue with like uh, visitors. Sometimes mm. vis visitors will come and like it's it sucks, but it's like they, they come in and they're like, oh, I just got staff, but I'm only here at B team for like a week. Like I'm not going to be able to train. And so like a lot of times they hide it and stuff gets on the mat and stuff. So there can be like outbreaks with that. But uh, usually it's, it's not too bad uh, skin wise. Um, but with the mats being slippery, there's also great potential for highlight reels when it comes to, uh, you know, Heisen loves when it gets all like slippery on the mats. He loves um, <laughs> kicking people's legs out, getting the, getting the foot sweep on. He's massive, um, isn't he? He's so big. He's so big. It's it's more like uh, like his limb length is so hard to deal with. Like he could just pull guard and just like the moment you get close to him, he'll just kick you in the chest. I was like, okay, now I have to reclose the distance again, and then just kick you in the chest again. I was like, okay, reclose distance. So it's hard to deal with. How's he getting on there? Is he is he progressing well? He's good. He's good. Yeah, I I think he still has a lot of potential. Um, it's just a matter of like like working for it. You know, mm. you gotta. Push yourself. Mm. We've actually got something that can help with the herpes and infections, actually. We're sponsored by um, a company called Grappler Soap. Let's see it. They literally make literally the world's best soap. Oh. Yeah. Nice. Oh, yes. This is quality stuff. And they do this uh, this stuff as well. It's like Beast Bomb. What is that? Like, uh, have you ever used a Tiger Bomb? A what? Tiger Bomb? No. Like a muscle, muscle relaxant. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, heat and cooling like bomb smell. It. Don't get it close to your eyes, though. So you put that on your niggles, Sick. mate, and your pains go away. I like that. But yeah, keep it. What's? Oh, yeah, thank you. What's What's the uh, the old ingredients in this guy? This guy smells good. All, all natural. Yeah, all natural. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, it's, mate, he's, he's great. Honestly, it's like uh, he's UK-based, loco. Oh, he's, really? And he's, yeah, he's very good. Awesome. Mate. Very, very good. Yeah, I really like... Uh, there's so many, like, like so much excessive ingredients and stuff nowadays. It's just trash. <laughs> just trash. Why not, like, just use natural stuff? Yeah. No, that's good stuff, mate. Yeah. Thank um, you. Mate, we'll let you go in a second. Um, but you're obviously on a bit of a tour at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, so, obviously, you're off to, you're down here with us at the moment, and then you're off to Liverpool, mm -hmm. where you're not going to understand anyone. <laughs> 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 Might as well speak a different language, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so tell us about the tour real quick. So, where are you off to after that, and what sort of stuff are you covering in the seminars yeah so um what stuff am i covering in the seminars seminars usually i like to cover i mentioned this before i like to cover a takedown a guard pass and a submission um so i'll try to like sometimes i'll do it like individually and sometimes i'll do like a, like a full sequence um and I'm like kind of how they all connect together so like uh at today's seminar i'll i'll go over a take down uh that will lead and t like tie in smoothly to a guard pass and a guard pass that will lead and tie in smoothly to a submission um and then at the end of the summer if we have time we'll be able to like kind of smoothly put all those like the entire chain uh together um so that's usually what i like to show for uh for seminars um but if I don't show that, usually it'll be like whatever the, sometimes the gym have like special requests. Mm. So I'll do that. Um, and uh, trip wise, I'm here, Liverpool, London. And then uh, right after London, I'll be headed over to Switzerland. I'll be there for uh, like a weekend. And then right after Switzerland, I'll be over in Italy um, for one seminar. And then just like exploring, doing like tourist stuff, um, which I don't, I told you guys I don't like people, so I don't, <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to like it, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, it's cool, man. And then competition-wise, what's like next on the uh, agenda, do you think? Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, potentially, I can uh, maybe December, but aside from that, it also might just be nothing for the rest of the year. Um, so at this point, it's like uh, I'm, I'm getting quite a bit of offers for seminars, and it's, it's Craig talks about this, like why um, – 
why would I dedicate eight weeks of my life in preparation for a uh, competition when I could just make the same amount of money for the competition in, in one weekend? Um, so co- I'm kind of at that point now. Uh, if if I'm not getting paid accordingly, I just have to just teach. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you enjoy teaching? I enjoy the fact that I'm getting better at it. Mm. I I tried to this year. I kind of set a goal for myself to uh, to either compete or teach a seminar um, once every single month, and I've stuck through for the, the entire year so far. Um, as well as I started my own podcast in order to get better at talking in front of the cameras and whatnot. Um, so set a few goals, pursuing those. Uh, it's going well so far. Yeah, nice, man. And if people want to check out the podcast, book you for seminars, how do they do that? Yeah, uh, for seminars, just reach out to me on uh, Instagram at jrod2.0. Um, and then podca- podcast-wise, uh, the Doghouse Podcast. What else we got? I guess, yeah, subscribe to the BTM YouTube channel. That's blowing up right now. Um, that's pretty much all, yeah. Any sponsors you want to shout out or anything? Oh, we always got level black going on. <laughs> my only sponsor honestly uh they have uh i mean they have great gear they, they've been with me even before i won trials um so they've been supporting me for quite a while i really appreciate uh i literally couldn't survive without him honestly he's uh he's a, he's a good guy good person as well as a great uh you know company um i think that's about all nice. that's brilliant should we get out of here Let's get out. All right. Mate, appreciate coming on, mate. It's been awesome. Thanks, brother. Thank you. Thank you, mate. Thank you.